Whereas skiing has traditionally been a rather elitist pastime within Britain, the advent of the package holiday has opened up the sport to almost everyone. Oh, you just let my other one go well, look. You just... <laughs> my I did wonder about that one. This, this man's a crook. Anybody got any change? What do you think? Get them free in England, you know. Oh, in the Germany. Each winter, Munich Airport provides a stepping stone for thousands of passengers en route to the Austrian slopes. Extra food, yeah, yeah. Extra food. Yeah. Yeah. Extra food. Yeah. 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 Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Tyrol. I hope you enjoyed your flight to Munich. Our driver today is Eric. Perhaps you'd all like to say good evening to him, but I'll tell you how to say it in German. It's a good Abend, if you can all manage to say that. Try that then, come on. Good Abend. <laughs> We're just about to come into Seoul quite shortly. And then you'll need to go along to the ski high shop and be kitted out in your skis and boots. So it just leaves me to wish you a very pleasant holiday in Seoul. I hope you have a really good time. The Tyrolean resort of Seoul boasts probably the highest proportion of British package holidaymakers in the Alps and is well suited to beginners. <laughs> Maureen and Brenda, for instance, are trying their hand for the first time. The fitting of skis and boots has become a highly technical affair. The pressure with which the boot should be held onto the ski can be exactly calculated. So, it's four, yeah? So that the ease with which the boot will be released is dependent on the size, age and ability of the skier. A beginner will fall frequently and old bends break more easily. Have you skied before? No, never. No, no. no. never. First, first time. time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I get it's more deep to get out of it. So, this is here is yes. integral. Then you step in at the same. Yeah? To the uninitiated, like Gladys, it's a baffling array of extremely cumbersome equipment. Okay, that's all. Not doing my measurements, is this well? So, how young are you? Oh, I'm very young. Very old. Forty-seven. Has that got something so, to do with my feet? Yes, of course. <laughs> Back in Bengen, the Downhill Only Club are holding their weekly cocktail party. This get-together provides an opportunity for members to learn of forthcoming activities and to mingle socially. So they waited to see whether I was mortally injured. And when they saw that I was, they all roared with laughter. Uh, well, yeah. Now, William's wondering about going up with the DHO tomorrow. Would you like to think, David, to join them? Are you familiar with the DHO? No, no, I'm not. What time is I thought it was a DHSS. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rather excited about it. So, uh, I, we, we went down there for to see Snow skiing this year at all. So you must know the 
English church quite well if you've been here so many times. Have you church. been in the English church? No, we have done you've, sorry, you've so. never discovered no. it in all your visits. Well, I must recommend it to you. It's, uh, it's St. Bernard's Church. If you go down towards, you know where the Schoenegg Hotel is as you're going up. The Brother Dear Joe, you know, it's, it's, it's this group. Now they run some quite. I might come with you. It's a silver group tomorrow for you. Well, you're a silver. So, uh, well, I used to be. Well, uh, you know, I'm watching you. You're silver standard they get, anyhow. They go quite quickly. Oh yes, oh yes. Oh, you want to go too? Quickly. Quickly. And there's a road up to the right. Yes. And you sort of follow that road up towards the Manlipin Cable Car. Yes. And um, sort of up past the village school, going up towards the cable. We have to meet Freddie in the top of the Salt Lake Lift. Yes. And um, John and I said, "Come on, Freddie, let's get down there uh, again." And we did. And it was very serious. I mean, I've done it before. Yeah. You walk yeah. straight past. You walk, yeah, it's it's good straight good. past. Yeah. 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 And I open it up sort of before breakfast every morning, and I've just locked it up. I'm sorry. I'm, I am. Yes, I'm the chaplain. Well, I, I live in a little village called Churchill near Kidderminster, in Worcestershire, and uh, um, we're regular attendants there. Yes, yes. Oh, I see. Well, well I, I, I'm only a holiday chaplain. It's stuff during the holiday season. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. C can you come in a little bit from the other room? I, I want to make one or two announcements, some of which are quite important, I think. <laughs> um, first of all, good evening and welcome. Who says that? Um, very nice to see such a large gathering of you here tonight. Um, and I'm very glad that today's been a nice sunny day for a change. Um, I am Piers Benson Browning. I am the secretary of the... Vengan secretary of the Downhill Only Club. Um, now, the main event of this week um, is a race that we would like to have run last year, but through operational difficulties and one thing and another, we never got around to doing. And this was a race in traditional costume to celebrate... Uh, last year was our 60th anniversary of, of the DHO, and this year is the 75th anniversary of skiing in the Jungfrau region. Uh, we are going up in a special train from Wengen at 11 o'clock on Friday. It's going to be, a, when I say a special train, it will in fact be one of the old, what are colloquially known as the coffee grinder trains, the old slow ones. But if we're all suitably attired, that will look extremely picturesque, to say the least. <laughs> um, I would like now, I think it's an appropriate time to, ha to hand you over to... On the morning of their first day in Seoul, a colourful army of beginners gather on the nursery slopes, awaiting their marching orders and wrestling with the unfamiliar equipment. Whilst the instructors wait patiently to be paired off with their group for the week, Maureen is still experiencing a few difficulties. What could you put this bit then? Well, I don't know exactly. Try and manage the those, and then before. if you can. That's it. That's it. That'll be better. Yeah? Yeah, it feels OK. Yeah, right then. Right, now do I put my feet into here then? Toe first, in there. Oh, no, wait a minute, your binding's up. Whoop, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is up and down. I think, isn't it? No. No, is that right? Yeah, Right. We're still going to go in there. Two in first, that's it. Push your foot forward a bit. No, no, you haven't got it in. No, no, put your foot further back. Your foot further back. Yeah. That's, no, then. Oh, yeah, that's it. Done it, that's it. It's all a struggle. Thank you. One of the most experienced instructors in Seoul is Peter Meyer. Well, what's this here? One hand is up. So look, so look again to here. All the skis across, maybe the tips a little more. They can all push sticks through. 
with a handsaw, stand up. His grasp of the English language may be somewhat limited, but enthusiastically he launches into the first and most important lesson for the beginner, how to get up once you've fallen over. <laughs> I've just, right, just struggled to get up from there. I know fancy going down again. Right. <laughs> and now... Behind? Oh, gold. So if I hold this piece of it here, so that, let's come on now. <laughs> One second, I've got no <laughs> chance. <laughs> I'm not physically fit enough. <laughs> How are you doing it from the front? Now do it. Don't ask me how to do it because you can't. So now lift your lips. So that that is. Oh, Lena. So that you lift the mass end. Ah, very stiff. Smooth it again, yes. Oh, very, very. So the young Sanjay lady. Why? Very soft and very bent. Now go to that. Sunday evening in Wengen, and the DHO are gathered for some rather unusual après ski. Welcome to this service of Holy Communion here at St. Bernard's Church in Wengen. Prayers like that, when they would perhaps seldom normally pray. Oh God, is how we all feel at times. It's actually a prayer for help, isn't it, to get down in one piece, to survive. If you don't have a guide, you may still enjoy being alive, not just on the mountains, but you may enjoy the whole of life. But if you don't have a guide, how do you know where you will arrive? What is it that makes Jesus the best qualified guide through our life, through your life and mine? It's this, the fact that Jesus, the pioneer, the trailblazer, has conquered death itself. Now, prayer here, my chosen, being particularly appropriate for skiers. As you'll observe in the words of the first verse, let not our slippery footsteps slide and hold us lest we fall.
Brenda and Maureen have opted for some apres ski of a more conventional type. No sleigh ride would be complete without a visit to a local hostelry. In this particular one, visitors are encouraged to partake in an unusual local method of taking snuff. On their second day on the slopes, Peter's group is joined by some new members, perhaps most notably Kevin. So, then you make small side step, so small side step go between. Despite a rather inauspicious start to the day, Maureen leads the group in an assault on the nursery drag lift. <laughs> One of the most crucial things here is to make sure you keep the exit clear for the next person. In this case, Kevin.
easier ways of getting up a mountain. thousand feet up on the frozen glaciers of Mount Ebnaflu, members of the DHO will rely entirely on their local guide, Oscar. A certain amount of wind up here at this altitude. Depends on the weather. The weather again. It isn't always. It's not, it's not but you have a little yeah. Yes, yes. With the temperature well below freezing, the group follow Oscar on the 17 kilometer trek down the glacier. Without a guide, the trip would be exceedingly dangerous. As it is, the day's journey will be a long and arduous one. But to the true skier, the thrill of skiing on virgin snow is perhaps the epitome of the sport.
back in Sol, the nightlife is taken as seriously as the skiing. Are we ready to fart now then, you think? Well, first of all, look, there's a few people looking a little mystified. They're not quite sure what fart is all about. They tend to get the wrong impression. They don't read the dots between the letters, that's the problem. But F-A-R-T actually stands for the finest Auslander racing team, see? And as everybody knows, all you linguists, an Auslander in the German language is a foreigner, right? So if you put it all into English, it's finest foreigners racing team, okay? So, in other words, if you're not an Austrian, you are indeed a potential father. <laughs> We've got an anthem. You might recognise it as singing in the rain, but of course it's not uh, singing in the rain, it's uh, farting in the snow. And then we have a little bit on the end of the singing where we go doopy doopy doo, doopy doo. That doesn't mean you're a little suspect. That means you're letting all your inhibitions out and being silly and having a bit of fun. That's what farting's all about, having a little bit of fun. Now, like any good fart, that first note is all important. And the fart song started off by the gentle tapping of a glass containing alcohol on a table. Now we've got to get this first note, that's the difficult bit. I know this is the first half fart, but let's make it a goodie. David's manager was heard to say the odd stone could make all the difference. <laughs> Very good.
By Wednesday, Peter's group are ready to try some of the higher slopes. Stiff and aching, they queue for the chairlift. I'm so tired of carrying one in the old. Oh, my foot stuck. Oh, what a state we're in. <laughs> You know, yeah. nobody's told us I yeah, can get on. No, no, or get on, come to no, that. No, or get on, come to that. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh my god, I haven't oh, even done yeah. it all. How did you do that? There. No? I can't. Put your skis on the top, look. Where? Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. I got one ski out and one ski in. chair back down again. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know whether I can cope with it. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. Well, these are the ski runs, look, are they? Well, I don't know. Do you think they are? Well, they must well, be. I don't... Well, there's They're no wrong. snow on them, is there? I've never seen anything oh, so oh, yeah, look, this is roads, Maureen. It's not for yes. skiing. It's roads, roads. look. Have you got anything on under that road? No. Of course, this is a very thick anorak, though, wouldn't it? Eh? I meant to put a bra on, but I forgot. Oh, I did remember that today, because I... I was still too tired when I got <laughs> Mind you, really, if you don't have any underwear on like that, you feel freer for skiing, don't you? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's better with trousers as well, you know, than an all-in-one. They seemed ever so thick, these trousers, when I first bought them, but they've got... They flattened, well yeah, the... the inside the filling flat, doesn't it? Mm. you seem to have spent more time on yours than anybody yeah. else. I do. <laughs> I flattened them. <laughs> Are we nearly there? I don't know. This is the next thing. We've yeah. got to lift this thing up. And get off. And get off. One ordeal after the other. It, isn't it is, isn't it? Help! Oh my God! Oh! oh. Done it! Another way. Well done. In Vengen, curling has been a popular pastime since the beginning of the century. And the British run Vengen Curling Club, with whom the DHO share a clubhouse, is one of the oldest in Switzerland. Yours, Pierre. 
Whilst the more senior members of the DHO enjoy a rather inexpert curl, club activity of a much more important kind is taking place up on the slopes. If you still hang in front at the, at the end of the turn, you can't really extend anymore. Yeah. But in common with three or four other British clubs, the DHO run a training program for their junior members. And you stand too long on your skis on the bottom. Groups are divided according to ability and age. The trainers are recruited from the national ski teams of Britain and Austria. Too much weight on the heels. Especially on the steep part, you get out of control like that, you can't finish off the turn properly. It's also the reason you ski straight onto the gate. The children are not so much being taught how to ski, but how to race. And the hope is to provide candidates for the British national and Olympic teams. If you sit back, you've got no control over the skis, right? Just wrap around. You've got to get forward, forward with the knees, eh? It's the boots. So the boots. The What's yeah. the matter with the boots? Well, they're kind of, you know, because I used to be able to go forward, but now I'm leaning back. Uh -huh. I don't know why. It's weird. Training programmes are run three times a year, and in order to have any chance of succeeding, a child would have to attend all three. Then you, you relieve the pressure from the outside ski and you start the next turn. Have a good look at the course. Pick out the it can be an expensive business. And for the moment at least, Britain's future competitive skiers will continue to be drawn from the wealthier classes. Thursday evening, and unworried by the prospect of their big race the following day, DHO members, both young and old, indulge in a regular favourite, the fondue party, where the emphasis is not so much on the food, but the drinking and making merry. The room, or stubli as it's known locally, is set aside especially and is designed for them to be able to make as much noise and mess as they like. Meanwhile, in Sol, an evening of Tyrolean entertainment is on the menu for Peter's exhausted group. Tomorrow they must face the ski school test and are more than happy tonight to let the others do the dancing.
Friday in Sol is the day of the ski school tests, where pupils are put through their paces in order to ascertain just how much they've learnt during the week. Number seven. Oh, 87. 87. Oh, 87. Where did it go? Right. <laughs> Put <laughs> 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 Eighty-seven chests. When you come to the finish, you line up at the left. Next day on board, so Wengen now. Line is ready. In Wengen, Friday has dawned damp and misty, but race entrants have turned up in full force, faithfully clad in traditional costume. The new trains that they've got planned in theory will do it to 12 and a half minutes from Wengen to Wengen. I shall never forget your tango. No. On the... Aquitania. Yeah, we fit so well together. Are you sure it wasn't the Titanic just before she went As the train reaches the mountain top, the weather has closed in even more but not enough to dampen the pioneering spirit of the British. to carry on down the path. A lineup of some 30 entrants await the starter's flag. Amongst them, four or five Wengen locals. British honor is at stake. Please leave the stage where they And now was from the start with number 87, Glaze Hall from England. It's on the course. Don't be frightened, ladies. You do it very well. Then now he keeps smiling, that's it, you have passed. And now she's gone. Through the first gate. Right, no blows very well. Brenda and now the last gate and straight on racing position. Wendy Clark from England. And 
so, to her absolute delight, Maureen makes the grade with flying colours. Back in Wengen, however, the weather has, if anything, got worse. Only six people actually succeeded in crossing the finish line, and the atmosphere for the prize giving back at the clubhouse is a little strained. Fifth anniversary Challenge Cup, which was held today. Um, despite one or two problems at the finish, where uh, people did come and stuck. Um, we have to present the prizes. Lynette, if you'd like to come forward, Lynette, please. And, um, and I'm very pleased to say that a very well-known Wengen local fellow, Andrea Kova, has won the Challenge Cup, if you'd like to come forward. A rather disappointing day for British skiing. But after all, it's not the winning that matters, but the taking part. Thank you.